What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my first year of UBC Engineering. Of the 13 absolutely insane courses that I took in first year engineering, one of these courses was Physics 157. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking Physics 157 during the 2022 slash 2023 school year. And all of the information in this video is subject to change in the future. So please don't get mad at me if your final exam is worth like half your grade now instead of 32% like I had it. And timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. So what is Physics 157 all about? In this course, which is the first introduction to physics for engineers, you'll learn about the fundamentals of thermodynamics, oscillations, and waves. Thermodynamics, as a great oversimplification, is concerned with what happens when you heat something up or cool something down. And the oscillations and waves portion covers the characteristics of different types of waves and simple harmonic motion. Thermodynamics will be taught for the first two thirds of the course, and then waves will be taught for the last third. All right, now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how Physics 157 will be structured for any given week. And sit tight because there is a lot of stuff that you'll be doing in any given week. Before your first lecture of the week, you'll have a pre-lecture reading assignment to complete, which will usually have a short section from the textbook for you to read and will be your first exposure to a topic before it's discussed in the lecture. Each reading assignment has an associated reading quiz to make sure you actually did the pre-reading. These reading quizzes are usually three to five questions long and are multiple choice. These reading quizzes also open on Saturday mornings and are due at 8 a.m. the following Monday. During the week, you will have three hours of lectures to attend that consist of conceptual questions, discussions, demonstrations, and activities to work on. Attendance is not mandatory, but the lectures will not be recorded, so it's best that you do attend them. However, the lecture slides will be posted after each lecture. During your lectures, iClicker questions may be prompted for you to answer, which are short multiple choice questions that are shown on screen. These are usually conceptual questions or may require a short calculation to answer them, and there is no grade associated with these iClicker questions. To answer these questions, you'll answer either through the iClicker app on your phone or by logging into the site on your laptop. Additionally, during the week, you'll have a one hour long tutorial session where you'll complete a tutorial assignment with a TA present. In these tutorials, you can discuss the questions with your friends and ask the TA for help if needed. However, I will say that attendance is not recorded in these tutorials, so take that as you will. Your answers to the tutorial assignment must be uploaded to Canvas for grading and will be marked based on completion only. In terms of homework, there are two types of homework that will be assigned each week. Mastering physics homework and written homework. Mastering physics homework is accessed online using the Mastering Physics system and consists of 5 to 10 questions of moderate difficulty. These questions can be attempted up to 6 times each, but a deduction will be applied for each incorrect attempt. The written homework is accessed on Canvas and consists of 3 to 5 questions of moderate to complex difficulty. In these assignments, you must show all of your work and explain your answers with both sentences and equations. Even if you don't get to the final answer, just showing your work and thought process can get you a fair amount of part marks. 
To write out and submit your answers for the written homework, you can either go paperless and submit a PDF of your answers from an iPad or a tablet, or you can write out your answers on paper and then scan it into a PDF to submit. Each week that you hand in a homework assignment, there will be a quiz related to the homework on the following day. These quizzes will have four to six numerical answer questions, which are answered through a Canvas quiz. And they are directly related to the Mastering Physics homework or written homework that was done that week. These quizzes are open book and you'll have 25 minutes to complete the questions between a five hour time period. In terms of the required materials for this course, you're going to need a few things to help you get set up. First, and this one's kind of a no brainer, but a calculator will definitely help. You can use any kind of calculator that you want, just no calculators with wireless capabilities. Second is an access code to Mastering Physics, which can be purchased on the UBC Bookstore website, and for me, it was around $44 or so. This is a mandatory course purchase because it is required to complete the homework for this course. And lastly is the textbook for this course, which is the University Physics by Young and Friedman textbook. The current edition is the 15th edition, but older versions are completely acceptable. And honestly, they're not that different from the newest version. If you'd like, you can pay for a physical or digital copy of the textbook from the UVC bookstore for a low, low price of $70 to $100. But if you're like me and you're okay with a PDF version of it, there may or may not be a link in the description below that will give you access to a PDF download of this textbook for free. But that's pretty much all of the materials that you're gonna need for Physics 157. All right, now let's talk about what you're actually going to learn in Physics 157. I'm gonna preface this section by saying that I'm gonna be spitting out a lot of concepts and words that may mean absolutely nothing to you. And honestly, that's completely fine. I never learned any of these concepts in high school, but I was still able to grasp them pretty quickly and do pretty decently in this course. There will be 14 weeks in the term with new concepts taught each week. In the first four weeks of the course, you'll get an introduction to thermodynamics by discussing energy, temperature scales, thermal expansion, stress and strain, phase diagrams and phase changes, and thermal conductivity. In plain terms, these are the concepts that revolve around what happens when you heat something up or cool something down. For example, if you heat a certain material up, it expands at a certain rate and thus there might be some stress on that material if it's encased between two walls. The next five weeks will be dedicated to discussing concepts related to thermal radiation and the solar constant, the concept of work and the ideal gas law, different thermodynamic processes, PV diagrams, and entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. In plain terms again, these concepts revolve around what happens when heat is transferred from one thing to another. And lastly, the last five weeks of Physics 157 are dedicated to the oscillation and waves portion of the course, discussing concepts such as simple harmonic motion, oscillation and resonance, different types of waves, and superposition. These concepts have to do with the analysis of different types of waves and their characteristics such as what they look like and their behaviors. And that's pretty much a great overview and oversimplification of what you're going to learn in Physics 157. Again, if you had no idea what any of what I just said meant, don't worry. To reiterate, I had no background knowledge at all in any of these concepts from high school, but I was still able to understand them and do pretty well in the course. In terms of the grading scheme for Physics 157, here is the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. First, we've got the weekly reading quizzes, which are weighted at 3% of your final mark. Tutorials, which are marked based on completion only, are weighted at 6%. Mastering Physics homework is weighted at another 6%, and written homework is weighted at 9%. Your quizzes, which are done each week, are weighted at 18%. In terms of exams, you will have two midterm exams worth 13% each, and a final exam that is worth 32%. 
these exams will have a mix of multiple choice questions worth two marks each and written questions worth 10 marks each. A couple weeks before the exam date, the physics department will post all of the previous exams since 2010 for you to study from. I highly recommend using these to study for your midterms and the final exam, and because you'll have access to over 13 years of past exams to study from, there is no shortage of questions to study from. After all, this is a physics course and the best way to study for these courses is to do as much practice as you can after you've grasped the concepts. Damn, that was a lot of course information all at once, so let's move on to some survival tips and advice to help you get through Physics 157. First, and this kind of goes without saying this, but this is really a course where you'll need to stay on top of things. If you haven't noticed yet, there is a ton of things that you'll need to do each week in Physics 157, and you need to make sure that you know when everything is due and plan your time accordingly. Second, and this ties into what I mentioned about the exams, but the best way to study for Physics 157 is to practice, practice, practice. And luckily for you, there is no shortage of practice problems to work through, from the homework questions to the numerous past exams that will be made available to you. If you're getting stuck on a concept when practicing, go back to your lecture notes to review them and then return to the question again. Doing as much practice as you can builds your problem solving abilities and is the best way to prepare for your exams. Speaking of the exams, this leads me to my last tip, which is to show all of your work. I'll have you know that the teaching team for Physics 157 is very lenient uh, with offering part marks for your homework and exams. I remember in one of my midterms, I had absolutely no clue how to approach one of the questions. So I just wrote down some of the formulas that could have been used and some of the information that was in the question. And I somehow received like three to four part marks in a 10 mark question. And this applies to all of your homework, midterms, and your final exam as well. So make sure to show all of your steps and calculations in case you don't get the final answer correct. Because us engineering students, we live and die off of part marks. Oh, and if any of you are curious about this, I scored an 81% in Physics 157, and the class average for my section was also 81%, which was my second highest class average out of all of my classes. And that's about it for everything that you need to know before going into Physics 157. I really, really hope this video can just help one person going into first year engineering in the future because I'll feel like my suffering in first year wasn't for nothing. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that my next video will be about Chem 154, which will definitely be an interesting video for sure. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.